The best code comments are the unwritten code comments. What do I mean? Today we're going to tackle the following question. Should I write comments in my code? The way school drills us is sort of to answer yes to this question because we're pumping in assignments with comments in every assignment. Unfortunately, I would say that the answer generally to this question is no, you should not write code comments. You should not write comments in your code. <clears throat> the reason is actually very, very simple. If you're writing comments in your code, that means that your code is difficult to understand without the comments. If you haven't seen my other video on making code read like pros, be sure to check out that video. But essentially, that's the point. The problem is not that the problem you are facing requires code that is inherently difficult to understand. The problem is that you've created a very strange solution, that you've chosen a poor abstraction, that you've built a difficult to understand solution to a problem that could be easy to understand. <clears throat> now, it's entirely possible that your case is different. But consider this interesting statistic, for example. The average driver thinks he or she is b a better driver than the average driver, which of course is sort of a logical impossibility. So I think we perhaps use the argument that our case is different in sort of the same manner. So we sort of spontaneously say that our case is different when in fact it's kind of just like any other case. Those of us who've been programming in school, again, we've uh, sort of been taught, most of us, to hand in assignments with code comments. My take on this is that I think that this stems from the need to assess that students are understanding semantically what they're doing and not just syntactically. But of course, that's a kind of strange thing to bring to the working environment. In the working environment, we of course assume that our colleagues semantically understand the code that they are writing themselves. It's a question of making them semantically understand the code that they didn't write themselves. And Again, the solution to this is not code comments, it's to write better code so that when they read the code, they can actually understand the code. So it seems to me that we're sort of slowly getting rid of this obsessive relation to code comments in, in the school environment. But it's of course super important that when we're eliminating code comments from academia, that we're actually replacing it with something else and not just removing it. Because inevitably, I mean, we've all been beginners at writing code. And if you think about the code you wrote very early on, you'll realize it's, let's say, not very nice. And code comments at least then help other people understand what you were trying to do. And in the case somebody was marking your assignment, they would understand what you meant and why you did and all of this stuff. So it's very important that when we are removing code comments, it's not that we are not replacing it with anything, because noobs may still continue to write code like this. In the school environment, I would of course argue that it should be replaced with serious discussions around abstraction and architecture. Going back to why we don't need code comments. Another good reason is testing. In dynamic languages, it's sometimes really hard to understand for example, what a method can handle getting because of duct typing. What? You have a method and it takes an argument, but because you don't know the type of the argument, it's very difficult to figure out what are appropriate arguments and what are not appropriate arguments. And this is, of course, one scenario where people would use, could use code comments. But this is a scenario where testing might actually become super useful. So your tests exercise your code and in your tests, you can then uh, look into and understand what is okay to pass as an argument and what is not okay to pass as an argument. So the relationship between testing and cold comments, and in other words, testing and documentation is a whole discussion in and of itself. And as usual, we're only scratching the very surface of it. So we'll dig into that specific discussion another time. But just be aware that a lot of people, including myself, argue that different levels of testing replace code comments because testing can be used as documentation for your system. Now, there's a lot of talk about why we shouldn't use code comments. Is there any time when, we, when it is actually appropriate to use code comments? Generally, I can only think of one scenario where I'm totally fine with having code comments. That is, if you have an algorithm where performance is very important. The reason I say that performance has to be important is that because abstraction usually crushes performance. So if you want to maintain performance, you will usually want to not abstract your code. And in other words, you may end up with an algorithm that's a bunch of lines long. 
So usually the argument is that if you have something that you would want to call an algorithm and it's more than a few lines and you would use that as an argument to say that, well, I need code comments because I need to be able to annotate this algorithm, then I would say that, okay, if you are expecting the algorithm to change, then you should still break it up into multiple pieces. Even though you feel that it's an algorithm, you should still break it up into multiple pieces because of the fact that you are expecting change. Because you are expecting change, it might have to change in the future, which means that people will have to understand it, which means that abstraction is the right tool for you. If it doesn't have to change, if you're not expecting change, then honestly, I would ask myself whether you actually need to annotate it or not. Do you actually need code comments in the algorithm if you're not expecting the algorithm to change? I mean, why do you then have the comments? Instead, wrap the whole algorithm in a method that has a sensible name. And if it has a sensible name, you don't need code comments because the name is self-explanatory in how to use it. If we go back to the scenario where you were expecting change, if you then argue that performance is important, then I say, okay, yep, code comments. If performance for the particular piece of algorithm is important, then yes, use code comments to make the algorithm understandable because you can't use abstraction. But be aware of premature optimization. When we're arguing that we need to increase performance, it should be because we have done testing and we have come to the conclusion that we need better performance than what we currently have. Do not optimize just because you think that you will need to optimize. Do it when you know that you will need to optimize. And of course, as usual, we're envisioning a perfect world, but in reality, a few other edge cases sort of hit us. And in some of these, I might say, yeah, it's okay to have a temporary code comment and then we'll get back to uh, removing that code comment in the future. But generally, the way I stand now, I think the only reasonable reason is if you need to maintain performance and have some kind of algorithm that grows complex. In all other scenarios, you don't need code comments. Okay. So that's it, I'll stop rambling. Key takeaway, the best code comments are the unwritten code comments. Should I write comments in my code? No, rewrite your code, refactor your code to make it self-explanatory. Make sure that people understand your code without having to read comments, that's it. If you have any questions or comments or angry outrage, just hit them in the comments. As usual, thanks for watching. I hope to see you next time and be sure to subscribe so that you won't miss it.